Travis Abraham from GoMath. Today we're going to be working on number 35 on the general curriculum math subtest. This is in the geometry section of the test itself. So I want to do is I want to read over number 35 and I want to work through strategies to solve it. This is a, a test that's really good for elementary um, teachers and special education teachers preparing to get their math li licensure. Whether it's in Massachusetts or in any of the states, this is a really good one to study. Um, it's also a good one for, you know, math specialists, you know, on the elementary, middle school, and high school level to study. They might see something like this on their test or something that they're going to give to their students. So it's a good one to, to look at. I put a little G here just to remind me that this is in the geometry section. When I'm thinking of geometry, I might want to keep in the back of my mind um, concepts of two- and three-dimensional shapes and shapes in space. Um, you know, just as sort of a reminder. Every time you switch gears on a test, you should be thinking, which gear am I switching into? Number, sense, and operations, algebra, geometry, probability. That way you have that backup information readily available. I'm not to say that you aren't going to use a combination of skills. You always are. But, you know, I think it's a good idea to have this stuff, you know, handy. So let's start. Number 35. A homeowner is planning to use carpet tiles to cover the floor of a room measuring 9 feet by 10 inches, uh, 9 feet by 10 feet 8 inches. So I, you know, right away I was kind of rushing into that. And uh, it helps me. This first line gives me a very important image. There's uh, carpet tiles that are going to cover a floor. And the measurements gives me the dimension measurements. 9 feet by 10 feet 8 inches. If the carpet tiles are 8 inches wide, and one foot long, and there are no gaps between the tiles as they are placed on the floor, how many carpet tiles will the homeowner need to cover the floor of the room? Well, let's take this apart line by line now. First, we have a floor. And it has measurements of 9 feet by 10 feet 8 inches. And then we have tiles. And if you think about tiles, 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 and more tiles, tiles is a critical image. So let's draw a picture of a tile here. Not just the flooring, but the tiles. What does it tell you about the tiles? Each tile is one foot. One foot, by the way, is equal to 12 inches. So let's try and draw that a little clearer. One foot, and I'm just saying right now, one foot is equal to 12 inches by, nine, by 8 inches. We're going to place this tile on the floor. Now my flooring, again, it's got measurements of 9 feet and 10 feet, 8 inches. Now my, each one of my tiles is one foot by 8 inches. So how am I going to place this tile? I've got to place it in a certain way so there are no cracks, because no one likes a cracky tile. So I think one foot, nine feet, how many tiles could go across? Well, if each tile, right, is taking up approximately one foot, I think that makes about sense. Nine tiles across, nine feet, nine tiles. And so that means I'm, each one of these uh, spaces here is one foot. One foot. Uh, that totally doesn't work as a color, does it? So this is one foot. And collectively, they add up to nine feet. And how much are the tiles going down? Well, each tile going down is, what is that? Uh, eight inches. Now, I'm not going to necessarily want to draw. I can't do that in my head, 8 inches. I know that each one of these is 8 inches. Okay. And I know this whole thing is 10 feet, 8 inches. 10 feet, 8 inches. You know, I have to deal with this in terms of one unit, feet or inches. And I'm going to choose, since I'm going down 8 inches, I'm going to turn this whole thing into inches. So 10 feet is the same as 10, right? Every foot, 10 feet. And every one of those feet has 12 inches. 
So I got 120 inches there plus the 8 inches. So this has a total measurement here of 128. Does that make sense? So I know this has a measurement of 128. And I'm going down 8 inches at a time. How many times does 8 inches go into 128? Well, I'm going to have to divide it. What's 128 divided by 8? You know, because that's, that's the only way I can do the division. I've got to do it out, set it up. And this is where you've got to very carefully do your division. This isn't long division. This isn't long. This is very, this is at best, at best, moderate division, which means if, if you're struggling with this, you got to go back and got to work on this skill a little bit more. This, this should be reasonable and it's very important that everyone practices this. I'm not just, I work with a lot of teachers and this stuff here is what throws them off the most. It's this core math, which it's not that you're not good at. Maybe it's that we haven't practiced it enough or haven't practiced it in a long time. I think that's, this is where you got to go back and you don't lose sight of this skill. This type of division and multiplication, this is where you want to fix it now. Work on that skill so that when you come to these problems like this, the mistake isn't involving that type of math because this we can correct by practicing it for a few hours, building up that, uh, that skill, you know, whether it's division or multiplication. I digress. We're going down 16 tiles. So we got something that's 9 tiles by 16 tiles, 9 by 16, that's how many tiles are there? Well, now i got to do this type of multiplication. Now, this type of multiplication, again, I, if I haven't worked on this skill in a while, it means I may be a little rusty. There's a bunch of different ways to do multiplication successfully. I want you to practice them if this type of multiplication kind of throws you off. But let's see, 9 times, nine times 6 is 54. Drop the 4 carry the 5, 9 times 1 is 9 plus the 5 is 144. I could have said to myself, if that, if that was throwing me off a little bit, I, I could have said, well, uh, you know, what's, uh, what's 10 times 9? That's 90. I mean, that's, uh, that's 90. And what's uh, 6 times 9? Uh, that's, uh, that's 54. When I add them together, I get 144. Lots of different ways to approach this, but at the end of the day, I get to 144 as my answer, or C. Okay, team, I like this problem. It has a, it's in the geometry section, so right away I'm thinking about, you know, um, shapes in space. When I read it very closely, line by line, I see I have dimensions of a rug. So that should be right away thinking of a rectangle and two dimensions. And then it just gives me the dimensions, and I got to remember to draw my picture, write up those measurements, convert everything into inches, so I'm dealing with inches here when I, when I place my tile. Write the tile on the side here. Make sure that you know you, you have that visual of that tile, partly because I have nine feet here, one foot here. Hey, this should line up with this. If I didn't visually, for me, for my mind, if I didn't visually put that on my page, I might not have gotten that. I might have tried the 8-inch side first and been like, well, how many times does 8 fit into 9 feet? Oh, I've got to turn the 9 feet into uh, inches. And I would have gone that avenue and I would have either gotten it wrong and said i got to try it the other way, or I would have got some number that made enough sense and gone that way. So anyways, the answer is C. I hope you found these strategies helpful to think about a problem like this. Keep on sending your questions. Check out a Harvard Square MTEL Math Workshop, or uh, you can go to gomath.com and you can uh, sign up for tutoring if you need some extra help. Thanks a lot. Have a great day. Bye-bye.